we're going to start with the very most basic thing, which you have to understand to uh, do any kind of antenna design or really any kind of design of anything for that matter, and that's a law of conservation of energy. And that says that if we take an antenna and it could be anything from a wet toothpick to a giant uh, multi band uh, yagi with uh, like one of the limey guys said with a sniff a boom you can walk on um, if you put 100 watts into that you are going to get 100 watts out no more and no less always you can take that to the bank now some of it i guess i didn't show that in this picture, but I should point out that some of that power can come out in the form of heat and some of it can come out in the form of radiated RF. But it's all going to come out 100 watts, but no more and no less. So what makes an antenna radiate in the first place? And it's the current flowing on the antenna. The field is directly proportional to the current and the length of the wire on which the current is flowing. This is the basis of all our antenna modeling uh, software for that matter. And it's because that's the laws of physics. It's uh, what the real antenna does, so it's what the model takes advantage of. For example, if you feed a dipole, you see that the current, the, the red line, the distance of the red line from the wire is representative of the magnitude of the current. So the current decays down to zero at the ends and, and it's maximum at the middle. If you uh, have a half wavelength thin dipole, uh, you'll end up with uh, a sine wave, a piece of a sine wave right here. If you have a shorter antenna, you'll just see the end piece is a little bit more linear. But that's what happens, and, and this dipole, therefore, the, the center is really doing more radiating than the ends are. 